Okay, guys, welcome back to part tour of the... <laughs> part tour of the tour? Part two. Okay, guys, welcome back to part two of this tour. With two brothers outdoors. Boy, I screwed that up. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get going. We enjoyed the tour. I hope you went to... The grinder and the welder. <laughs> yeah. What's your guys' background? I mean, what do you do when you... Um, I started out years ago, I thought about going into engineering. Yeah. If you tell me what you want and how you want to do it, I can build it. But when I started going to college for engineering, the math crushed me. I can't. It's just too too hard. Too hard. We didn't have the NICAP program and stuff back then. It was all <laughs> pencil and paper and calculator. Yeah, barefoot up the both So sides. I ended up, um, GE closed down. So I ended up getting into the uh, diesel engine technology and became basically a diesel technician. Yeah. And from there, I ended up in fabrication. They, they bring stuff to me and say, we work for International Truck. And they'll bring a truck to me and say, we need to make this truck fit this body. How can we do it? And I fabricate it and help me yep. do it. Yep. So, um, yeah. You tell me how you want something to do it. Up here. Thank you. I don't think anybody hides up here in the wintertime, do they? <laughs> yeah. This was just the whole floor. Dan bought this a few years ago. Spring checked it, got it, and looked at it, and he had serial number one. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. Blair Morgan edition. Yeah. First one built. Yep, have a room. Yep. I got to turn the hose on. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Big cylinder out on that one, huh? This is one I like right here. Put heat in it. You're good to go. Yeah, Very impressive. Yep. A lot of snowmobiles got taken apart here. Now, is everything you have here um, on the computer where they can look it up and say, yes, we have one? Uh, a lot of it is. Yep. All your engines, all that stuff. You know, well, just organized to the website. Like, say, I need, uh, I need uh, Expansion tank and blah blah blah. Right. How do you know what? Yeah, a lot of it's uh, you pick. You know, too. It's like you can organize and live the best that you can. You know, there's some stuff that's. Just goes on and on. There's so many. I did see it clicked on Google Merchant, so I don't know why that's not finding it yet. Yeah. yeah. Right, it might take a second to get to all the servers, too. Tracks? Yeah, need some tracks. Yep, for the two people that know it. All right, you ready to see this? You need a job, there you go, Bubba. Boys go. only. Boys only. <laughs> all right, we gotta get our uh, safety glass parfumally on. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. Well, you look spiffy like a hot rod with them glasses Thanks. on. Oh, look at all the steel. Wouldn't I be fun here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, still going. Yep. So when I uh, will say it's made in America, here's your proof. Here's your proof. Here's your Raw steel, raw so material. This is our tuck shop. This is where all the parts begin. We ahead and call an assembly process. Okay? So you have different orders for different things that we're building. 
that get put on a pallet, put in bins, you know, first cuts are here and it goes to the next state. Right. So if you look down here, you can see we got a main runway. Right. Looking from the outside, you can see the is very long. And it started out in that one little red barn. Right. Like a small mountain, and then they get added on to, okay, we need a building, we need a building. And you'll see as you walk through the different sections, it's been added on, added on, yeah, added on right. over time throughout for all the... So everything starts here, the field gets cut, and the piece was like this, it's put on pallets, categorized. Piece goes on a mill, a certain mill. Part of the office is up front there, so we've got a lot of work done. The large is a little red source, so things can come in and out. Then we have all of our parts and pieces of the mills and the process that are pretty well there, different well things. This is our main well area here. We're already going to put it to a dig. How many of these, 20 of these, 30 of that, whatever that's doing. And that moves on to the next area. That table right there, more wells. A lot of these new machines are pretty neat. A lot of them coming off with a certain arm. And you got to add this uh, a, a lot of moving parts. doing the same thing every day to get a little bit Yeah. Okay. And that 
are uh, following the build sheet, you know, say you ordered this, you know, with this package and this on there, you put that together to fill for order or fill for stock, whatever that's going. And this is where they're all put together. So we're all the main assembly of the mill. Yep. We had a separate assembly area for uh, hydraulics. Okay. In this part of the building over here, that's our parts and inventory. The wall in that is a very busy place. A lot of stuff to take. They don't have a guy that's going to go pick a bolt off here, pick a bolt off here. They're already pre-kitted, except for guys. Uh, John's standing back there. Hey, John. Oh, yeah, there's John back there. <laughs> Um, so we're coming into our shipping and receiving area. This is another busy place. So this is where all the parts come in. This is where all the product comes in and out. Let me see if I can find what we're talking about. Back, you know, what's back, what's back, what's back, what's not, and everything else. Right. And that's always a little bit of a loaded question because we work through a dealer network with stocking locations throughout the countries okay. um, where equipment goes. So you might have uh, an order here. It looks like you got stock, but it's already labeled. I know where that's going. That's going to one of our locations in Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, same thing with those. I can see a lot of stuff's tagged. So we've got different stages orders that are going on trucks to different locations right now i caught that you said countries countries what other countries than the united states worldwide uh yeah we we've shipped uh, a lot of different countries for that matter i mean canada's our, our largest yep. uh, country that we sell product to um europe has a lot of mills in it we actually had a, a good relationship not that long ago really? with uh, a dealer that was selling in europe mm -hmm. Uh, they got a couple different rules there you have to follow because you have to see certifications and things of that nature. Right, right. Uh, a lot of mills have gone to Africa. You know, a village will get a mill and that's what they're living on, which is just amazing to help out people like that. There would be a lot of uh, churches that will yeah. put up a donation and they got to get a village a sawmill. You know, and we're proud to say there's villages with Hudson sawmills that, you know, churches have come together and funded and you know, we've helped out the best we can to get those sawmills to places and people can build their shelters. I can see where that would be a big asset too yeah. for uh, yeah. South America. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good place. We send a, a lot of people down. Uh, this, I see John's over here, so we'll go see if we can find John. <laughs> he does our quality control, uh, so we do a lot of testing. Right. On, on our mills. I mean, we, we cut. If you see some a little bit of sawdust on it, that's okay. That's because we checked it. So, Brian, no. Right. Just check it. It's cut straight. Good, John. Oh, yeah. John, how you doing? Good. Good. Hey, John. How you doing today? Good. How are you? Rock your broken jack. Did you? Good. 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 It went together fine, but. Um, I did it backwards, my computer was not put the set screws in the bearing until I got to the ship center. And then... You didn't call me and ask me how to do it, did you? No. You sure did. Once I started to squeeze the ship together, it's like moving and we had it. I got it, but... Makes a point on the stake. Yep. It's a big pencil sharpener. <laughs> so, so that was the next thing I was going to ask is 
what would be the purpose of putting a point on the stake? For tree stakes, for garden stakes, for okay. lawn stakes, landscaping. landscaping. You, know, you go down the side of the road, you see them uh, uh, plastic sheets that are like holding dirt and stuff back when yes, you got a construction yes. zone. Those are all wooden stakes. Gotcha. Yeah. See, this is all you do. Our other style, you had to actually had a clamp on here and rolled on a tray. Right. And you had to clamp it down every time, put it in, clamp it, and then shove it in. This one. It's like you just roll out. You want to change size of the stakes, just change the size of the goes right in. Gotcha. Oh, these are test stakes, you can see how nice they come out. Tell us I got pencil. It's like a big pencil sharp, man. And not knowing what these are for, it's just my own ignorance. I yeah, no, no. A lot of guys make their stakes in the wintertime because in the springtime the market is dry for them. And a lot of like tomato growers out west, yeah. you know, eastern or western New York, steaks are a huge industry. Remember that for the future, steaks are big. There you go. Poplar steaks are extremely good for landscaping because they rot off so fast. Okay. So when they plant the tree, you've got to leave that tree stake for usually two or three years. Right. So then when they come through and remove the stakes, they just snap it off and blow the ground and it's back in the ground. It's a lot easier to be able to pull in the stakes. This is I never even thought about the stake. I mean, I know they've sharpened fence posts to drive in the ground with the stake. Yeah. It's like... You know, stake industry is a big industry. I, I see what you're talking about now. Yeah, you see the, you see the rope destruction. Uh, All that silk fencing. Yeah. Yeah. 200 an hour you can do on this machine. 200 an hour? 200. Depending on how fast you work at your side. As fast as you can handle it. Yeah, fast as you can handle it. You can do 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 it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We got that uh, edger that we're working on now too. So we're gonna have the uh, edger with the gain edger. Uh, we actually have a guy in uh, uh, Massachusetts. Good to they, they, yep. Yeah. So you can have your more grip and it's a gain saw. So you can send your uh, say one sock through and it's got one inch blade. One by one. Yeah, that would be an edger. Yeah. Put that on the Christmas list. <laughs> And that's on a 428. Okay, so there's the electric we were asking about earlier. Look at that. And what horsepower uh, motor is that? That's that one's the five horse 240 horse. single phase. That's our most popular setup right there. Nice. So this is John. We met him at the show. Yep. We met you at the show too, but yeah. you didn't get on camera. <laughs> you were busy. Yeah, we, we were definitely busy. So this is where you do all your testing. Uh, yeah. well, the, the bigger you want, the like big the, units. Yeah. Fifty-two track. I got set up over there. See a big log on. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll check it out. It's a nice piece on there if you want to look at it. And then uh, three sixty testing we do here. Got another section set up here. We try to test them just like the customer would use them. Okay. That's critical. Like this is set up. Okay, I'm a customer. I ain't got a lot to work right. with because I don't have a mill. So I use the scrap wood and set it up just like a customer would have to do it and make sure that it works that way. Because he's going to be in the field. I can make anything I want here to test with. Right. But the customer doesn't have that opportunity. So we use what we like a customer would do it, and that works out well because then I know it's proven. It yeah, absolutely. So when they, if they got a question, I can get on the phone and, and explain it right to them. To Proof the is in the pudding. Yep. Uh, that we've uh, been producing for quite a few years, and this is actually out where we test them. Every one of the hydraulic sawmill gets tested in wood before it goes. We uh, have a training. Well, you got a training program. Got a guy coming in. Customers yep, local, they come here and get trained. Yeah, yeah, nobody, nobody trained train. me on mine. Yeah. You didn't buy an H36? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, make sure that the customer cuts with wood so they know how to run it. Uh, they're not overly complicated, just like everything else we do at Hudson. We try to keep everything as simple as possible. Right. Um, 
but you know there's a few things with this mill that could be a costly boo-boo if uh, you didn't know what you were doing absolutely um, almost everybody orders this mill packaged up so it's going to have your power feed on your head your log loader going to have a log turner bi-directional a uh, log dog which should be doubled as a tow board uh, and uh, backstop so all the movement of the log is done hydraulically um, the actual movement of the head is an electric system okay. uh, that runs the head back and forth uh, you got a control speed control here so you can set your speed increase decrease forward and reverse you know make your cut moving forward and come back at a pretty uh, fast clip so you're not waiting too long now these are available with computer control now correct uh yep we got the the blade set the hudson blade set that uh, will be on this mill uh, as an option that can also go on uh, any other mill with the lift bail system like the oscar 336 we already got a few of them that people are uh, calling and asking for the advantages of the blade set is it takes your uh, your scale out of there uh, you can tell it what board you want to cut and it'll memorize where you are set your blade curve and set your blade so you'll make your cut hit your bump up button mill will come up to the proper height bring your head back hit your next cut button it'll go down to your next proper height and make your cut you don't actually have to look at the scale at all so it speeds up the operation it just speeds a little up bit. the operation and uh, makes it a little simpler is uh, the, the biggest benefits of having that blade set on there well, let's just take a quick walk around this mill and show you everything yeah. that's on it Look at the shadow coming through on that engine, the 360, the way that the cut yeah. out is kind of cool looking. <laughs> oh yeah, I just, yeah, I just... Might come out in the video. It will. Yeah, that's the, that's the uh, sun shining through the sign. Yeah, you guys certainly picked a beautiful day here in upstate New York. Absolutely. This is the kind of weather I like. Yeah. And this mill is built. Two by two framing. Stainless steel lift bales, three by six box beam track with uh, six different set points. Pretty neat. Adirondack Railroad heading up through. From uh, Barnville to Remsa, that's the steepest part of that rail system. A little, little fact for you there. This is a nice mill. Yeah, we got some really good dealers. Just a little dealer support right here, picking up some mills. Shed full of skidding winches. These are ones not ready to go, but ones that are for sale, right? Yeah, they're Plenty in stock. This is quite the busy facility. A lot of traffic. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna call these the Halloween specials. Limited edition, orange and black. Okay guys, we're back at the uh, comforts of our own sawmill. Pooped. <laughs> we had a great time today. We would like to thank Hudson for the hospitality. We would like to thank the owners. people at Hudson, the owners. Dan and Nicole, thank you. General Manager Mike and Techno John. I'm calling Techno John because when you call there and ask for John, do you want John the salesman? Or John the Technical. We want Techno go Techno John. I tell you what, if you got any questions about a sawmill and how it operates, most of your people know everything about those mills. They're very knowledgeable about their stuff. But John, John really knows his stuff. So anyway, we, we thank you for the hospitality. We thank you for the fantastic tour. All the folks there, the warranty department, the parts department, everybody. Sales department. Uh, we got to visit with a lot of people. Even the office folks. <laughs> very, very friendly people. Very. And uh, it, it's just great. We had a great time. So thanks for coming along with us, guys. If you're not a subscriber to our channel, hit that subscription button. notifications bell you don't want to miss any of our future videos all right guys thanks for coming along with us on this tour we enjoyed it hope you enjoyed it until the next one we will catch you later